Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and today we're going to take a look at how to self-host an ASP.NET Web API application. So I have a blog post from July 14th, 2015. Uh, it's going to cover the basics of what I'm going to describe here in this video. Um, although this post is old, it's still very relevant, and that is also the reason why I'm doing this video is because I get quite a bit of traffic um, with people searching and hitting this page, this post, to get details on how they can self-host web, ASP.NET Web API. Before we jump into code, I just wanted to clear up some definitions. Uh, the definition of Owen and Katana. So Owen defines the standard interface between .NET web servers and web applications. And Katana is Microsoft's implementation of Owen. So the Katana project is actually what we're going to be using to accomplish this. Um, although the package names, the NuGet package names, say Owen, ultimately this is the Katana project. So now in Visual Studio, the first thing we need to do is create a console application. Ultimately, the console app is what's going to host our Katana HTTP listener, which is the web server, um, which is obviously needed in a console application, not a regular applica web application that you're used to. So the first thing we're going to do once we have our console app is install the Katana uh, self-hosting package for a web API. So we can do that by in the package console manager, install Microsoft.ASP.NET.WebAPI dot owen self host so now that we have our package installed we need to define a startup class uh, what the startup class does is it defines the application pipeline and all the specific components that we want to use that we want to tell owen to use so let's create a startup.cs file You know, post a little snippet that I have already have set up in here. Um, and this is going to be called by Katana. So we have an iApp builder, and we are going to specify in our build pipe, like our, in our HTTP pipeline, that we're going to use Web API. And in Web API, we're going to just define a default routing scheme for API controller and then any optional ID. All right, so now let's jump over back to our program.cs and what I'm going to do here is just paste a snippet which is going to create our web server using HTTP listener um, which has a type parameter that we can specify our startup class so here we're going to actually start the web server on localhost and I'm just going to be running this under port 12345 um, and this is specifying that, that that's our startup class that we created. Uh, one thing to note is depending on what port you're using, um, you might need to be running Visual Studio as administrator so that it can actually bind to that port. All right, so we actually have everything here to run this. So let's do that. Let's run it and then make a call from Postman. So our app is now running, and if I open up Postman, we're going to make a HTTP call, just a GET request to 12345 on port, um, and we should get a 404 because we really have nothing at this point. And we can see we get a 404. All right, so let's create um, a Web API controller, um, and then execute that in Postman, and that should be it. That should be the basics. So let's fire open Visual Studio again, stop debugging. So what I'm going to do is create a new class called, we'll call this demo controller. I'm just going to paste a little snippet in here. So here's our API controller, uh, and we just have a get that's going to return an array, a string uh, array of hello world. So let's run this again. And we're running. So if I jump over to Postman, now let's go to API, Demo, and we see we get Hello World. So that's it. That's the basics of creating a console app uh, using the Katana project to self-host a Web API controller. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, the source code for this demo is available on GitHub. I'll have a link in the description along to a link to this post uh, to give you a little bit more uh, of a guideline detail that you can copy and paste some snippets as well. Uh, thanks for viewing and subscribe for more .NET related videos.